In my last video, I showed how I took the QCX Mini and one battery and took part in a challenge called the One Battery Scientific Game. I'm not sure how well I took part in it really because it was meant for people who make tiny little QRP transceivers and see how long they'll last. But I thought it'd be interesting to find out if a QCX could run on just one small battery and, and just what you could do with it. And during that video, I wondered I wonder just how much power am I getting out of this thing? And I'm sure it was very small, but I really had no idea. And I've wondered more and more since. So today I'm going to try and measure and find out how much power is coming out of my QCX when I use it with one nine volt battery. So having decided to find out how much power is coming out of my transceiver, I need a way of measuring it. So what I did is go back to the QCX literature and an article by Han Summers, which I remember reading, and using a method that he suggests of taking the output from your transceiver, putting it into a dummy load, and then connecting a oscilloscope across the dummy load. So the probe is on the output and the ground is on the coax ground. And then measuring the peak to peak voltage on the oscilloscope, multiplying that by itself, and then dividing by 400. And if you're interested in the formula and the mathematics of it, it's a really fascinating article. And there's also a video by Hans about setting up a QCX in which he explains all this. And as ever, I have to say, he is very cautious about saying how accurate this is, and I agree. I've done my best to calibrate my oscilloscope and the probe, and now I'm ready to make some measurements. So I'll put this other one out of the way. And the way we're gonna do it is take a brand new battery and connect it to the clip which is on the QCX, ready? Is my computer back on? And when I press the key, we should see the sine wave on the oscilloscope. There it is. And in the corner, I can see the peak to peak voltage. Let's take a peek at that. It's coming in at about 19.6 volts. So I'm gonna put that in my spreadsheet, 19, 0.6 volts and that tells me that squared it's a much bigger number and then divided by four it's 0.96 watts so less than one watt now I thought I was getting more than that so I'm going to go on now and I've got some other batteries here ready I've got uh, 8.75 volts 8.3 volts and about 7.5 volts which represent something like the different stages I went through during that earlier video. Let's see what power they come up with. So I'll do those measurements now and come back and show you in a moment. 8.75 volts. Well that peaked at about 11.2 volts. So that's about a third of a watt. 8.3 volts. And that peaked at about 8.8 .8 volts. Let's put it in. That's come out at just under 200 milliwatts. After lunch, I came back and made one more contact and then I felt I wasn't getting anywhere. And then I measured my battery and it was about seven and a half volts. So let's measure that. At seven and a half volts, the display's only flickering and not coming on properly. And there's no output, so it's not working. <laughs> well, what can I conclude from doing my measurements with one battery powering the QCX. Well, one of the first things I've realized is that even with a nine volt plus brand new battery, this is probably about 9.7, I'm getting a power output of just under one watt, maybe one watt if I'm lucky. As it goes down between nine and eight, I'm in the range of half a watt, a third of a watt, 200 milliwatts, so when I departed for lunch in my previous video, I was down to about eight volts, so probably 200 milliwatts or slightly less, maybe 150. When I came back after lunch, I made one more contact, which was over a thousand miles, so that's fantastic. But then after that, I got nowhere. And the reason is that at seven point something volts, the battery just isn't powerful enough to give the right starting voltage to the voltage regulator that's controlling the processor in the QCX so it really can't process and function. 
The next conclusion I draw from this is that it's not just about the voltage, it's about the quality of the battery, how it's changed as its voltage has dropped, the temperature, and obviously the amount of current, the capacity that the battery can offer to the piece of equipment it's powering. And as a comparison, I've put 7.45 volts on my power supply and connected the QCX. And when I do that, I am actually getting 12.8 volts and that gives me a power of half a watt. And I think the reason for that is that the battery just has no capacity left, but the power supply can obviously give the QCX whatever it needs. The third thing I've realized is Yes, it really is possible to do worthwhile QRP amateur radio with tiny amounts of power because I was using sort of 200 milliwatts or less. I've never done that before and I managed to make a contact a thousand miles away. And I've also realized that quite a lot of the time when I've been working from my windowsill radio station, I've been using less power than I thought. And this is really interesting and I go portable sometimes and I've tried different power supplies. So I'm going to do another video where I try the three different QCX models I have, the FT817 that I've recently bought. In fact, I bought two of them by mistake, so I'll try both of those. And I also have a couple of uh, models of the QRP Pixie on 40 meters that I've built. So I'm going to try those with different kinds of battery and different kinds of power supply and see if I can work out for myself and hopefully to help anybody else as to what would be a good way of powering them either at home or when you go out with them, take them portable and so on. So I found this really interesting and helpful for myself. I hope you did too. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching.